Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching today's Ag Forecast for South America, brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions. We're going to start off first here with a look over the last 11 days or so of satellite-derived precipitation. So this would be April 1st through the 11th. And a couple of things to take note of. Uh, quite a bit of heavy precipitation in parts of Argentina. You see that you get kind of east here of the, the foothills of the, uh, of the Andes Mountains, and we do see some locally very heavy rainfall from some of the thunderstorm complexes that move through there on that very slow-moving front front we watched even continue through the weekend. What is important to note though is that to the north of that, including Mato Grosso do Sol, even getting down here into parts of Rio Grande do Sol, this is an area that almost saw no precipitation over that time period. That's April 1st to April 11th. And farther to the north in Mato Grosso, getting over into the eastern growing areas of Tocantins, Bahia, uh, Minas Gerais, this area, there was a lot of just scattered storms, which are typical of the monsoon, but some locations in there did miss out on some of this precipitation. Now, I would like to come back and just have a quick discussion about Argentina because there's actually a pretty robust weather station network in Argentina that I can access quite quickly. And why don't we just take a look at a few areas. So this is Buenos Aires province. Let's just click right over here on this station and kind of take a look at some of this recent precipitation. And we can see there are some holes. And we had talked about some of the drought pressures back in November, December, and January. And then this big gap right in through here that happened at the end of February and beginning of March. But this is some of the recent precipitation precipitation that's come on through March and now into early April that's helped revive some of the drought-stricken corn and soybeans in that area. We can come over toward near Cordoba. Let's pick this station right in through here and take a look at the very same thing. We could argue that this particular region had better precipitation back uh, in February into early March and then lately here's just the heavy rainfall event where they got about an inch uh, from this last system that rolled through that particular area. And finally, why don't we go from Cordoba over toward Santa Fe. Let's just pick this station right in through here and just have a quick look. There's again the recent precipitation. This is uh, almost 50 millimeters of rainfall from the thunderstorm complexes that came through here lately. And while there are some gaps, we can see better precipitation as of late on the crop that's in Argentina. Okay, uh, as we think about what we did get over the last week, so again, we're coming back to this map, I would like to show you the temperature anomalies for the last week. And we can see that we were quite warm in parts of southern Brazil uh, and also in sections of Argentina too compared to normal. And then northern Brazil over the last uh, seven, or ten, seven to ten days here, uh, showing up with some warmer than average conditions uh, as well. So where do we go with this forecast? Well, we're going to rely on the models here for the next week. And uh, we do expect things to get drier in Argentina, as you can see here, drier in eastern Brazil. But the models are picking up on more scattered, more normal, late monsoon precipitation in Mato Grosso and actually now extending farther to the south into the very dry parts of Paraná, which were, again, dry over last week. And I want to kind of show you what's going on there by going to the operational European model run. So here's that low that exited. And again, this is the low that last week dragged this front through this area, and now that front is extended right to there. So what we're going to watch here is we're going to see how this changes the precipitation patterns through Monday now, getting into Tuesday and Wednesday. So that low is gone. See it? And high pressure builds in through the middle of this week, and we're quite dry throughout much of southern Brazil. We're quite dry through Argentina, with maybe only normal monsoonal showers here in the far northern areas of our growing area, so even dry, drier in parts of Mato Grosso. What we begin to see is, this is interesting, as this high pressure cell begins to move itself offshore toward the end of this week, it seems to allow for better monsoonal flow north and more scattered storms to erupt right in through this region and through here. You see it Thursday and getting into the day on Friday. See, see the scattered storms in this area? So this isn't like ubiquitous widespread coverage of rainfall, but the potential for returning some scattered storms to some of those drier pockets, Mato Grosso do Sol getting down over to Paraná and Rio Grande do Sol begins to increase. Same thing with Paraguay as we work our way out toward the end of this week and the weekend. At least that's what the latest models are picking up on. So we come back and we see that now reflected here in this area in the next seven days of total accumulated precipitation. But the models have continued with this trend into week two, and that is to return uh, above average precipitation for a broad sector here at Brazil's growing areas. But with the high pressure still in place, pockets of Argentina, southern Brazil, specifically Rio Grande do Sul, Paraguay and Uruguay are the drier spot. And that's been a consistent theme going back to last week. 
this area is showing up drier. We have more of our fall frontal boundaries moving toward the north here through Argentina, but this is primarily due to the fact that we're going to see the transition of the MJO out of phase seven over into phase eight. And some new updates here of the MJO, let's just take a look at it, show us that uh, that progression is going to happen through the next, let's call it 10 days we stay in phase seven, and then we get over into phase eight as we go out here into um, the, the week two time period. Now, I'm going to be honest, given that we're already here, the odds of this coming screaming back around over into phase four and five, which I had originally thought could happen by the end of the month, are diminished greatly, which may point toward a more normal end of the monsoon for Brazil. Uh, and that's that's a bit of a different forecast than I was giving you over the last couple of weeks where I, I really thought that the tropics were going to be seeing more activity of this MJO crashing back into null space and popping back over here by the time we got into early May. It does appear now that the MJO is going to just continue to move around, therefore taking quite a bit more time to get over to this area. So you say, well, what, what does that mean? Well, that, that means that this wetter pattern that you see here um, I had forecast, I think, to be too dry. And I think we're now going to see a more normal end of the monsoon, which, by the way, we're getting toward the very end of the monsoonal flow here once we get out to the end of April and the very beginning of May. So I'm going to keep you up to speed on how this is all progressing. We'll watch these model runs again later this week and report back to you on Thursday with a new update. But with that, we'll go and wrap it up. Appreciate your attention. Have a good rest of your day. Thanks.